All right, well, as I mentioned earlier, this will not be easy. This is going to be a very interesting day. It's going to be a tender day. Um, I think that also it could be a messy day just because uh, life can be messy. It can be very difficult, and yet we as followers of Christ have the opportunity to step up to the plate and love on people in the midst of their struggle, in the midst of their suffering. And, of course, um, I mentioned a few things about this during the open to the program, but, Zach, talk with me quickly here before we bring Pastor Scott Lackey into the conversation. He's the pastor at New Story Church in the Kenmore, Tonawanda area. Uh, He's a family member to Nicole Richard. And, Zach, you were the first to bring this to my attention. You saw this, I think, on social media or something. Just set the stage here for how we got to this point. Well, I was, I believe it was last Thursday, I was filling in for you, you were on vacation, and I was scrolling through Facebook, and I saw one of my friends, Carolyn McDonald, uh, who's been on the program before, she had shared just terif- terrible, terrific, uh, tragic news, rather, that her cousin, Nicole Richard, had passed away, and I had known Nicole 10, 12, 15 years ago, because through some acquaintances at the camp that I had worked at, she had worked the year before me. So she was friends with some of my friends, and we had hung out before. And so it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Wait a minute, she passed away? So then I did some digging, and I realized it wasn't... I mean, death is tragic regardless. We know that, thankfully, she knew the Lord, so she's with him. But Amen. I come to find out that she had two young boys, two- and three-year-old, and that she had died giving birth to twins. Also boys. Also boys. And so she's leaving behind... Four young boys, a husband, a family, a loving support network, and it's just, it blew my mind, and it just, I, I knew that we had to talk about it here because it's just so tragic. Yeah, it's one of those stories that's hard to wrap your brain around. Now, Scott Lackey has been with us before. He's actually hosted NBL before. He's a longtime personal friend of yours. I'm still deciding if I want to be his <laughs> friend, actually. <laughs> but he I jo- haven't made the cut. <laughs> yeah. But he joins us here on NBL, and you know what? Sometimes you need a little bit of humor to help deal with hard issues. And Scott, uh, you're actually related to Nicole, who's home with Jesus now. You're related to this family we're talking about, and I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about this, you know, both as a pastor, obviously, but also as a family member, and lend any insight that you can. So tell us some of this story, uh, you know, from your own perspective and how this has impacted your own family and circle of friends and so forth. Yeah, uh, so Nicole is my wife Kim's cousin, and last week she went in to deliver the babies. It was Wednesday night, and we ended up at some point in time receiving some news that there were some complications, not knowing exactly what that would lead to. You know, every once in a while you hear about someone having complications during pregnancy, and so we as a family, we started praying and uh, praying for the babies, praying for Nicole, and you know, we went to bed that night knowing that, you know, there was some serious stuff going on, but believing that God was going to work and everything was going to be good and, mm-hmm. you know, things would be figured out somehow, some way. Well, that morning, Wednesday morning, I got up. I always get up before Kim and I uh, was doing a couple things, doing some work. And I got a text message from a friend around 6, 7 a.m. And uh, he's also close with Kevin and Nicole and been praying for them. And he told me the news, and I thought, this doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. What? And he told me that Nicole had passed, and I, 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 I'm just stunned. So I went and woke up my wife, and in some ways, I was thankful that she didn't find out via text message or social media or, or anything like that type of platform. And I was able to share with her in person. It was some of the hardest news I've ever had to share with her. And I'd never seen her like that before. And and, in the morning that we both experienced together in that moment and the family has been experiencing has been all too real over the past week as this is something that you never really expect to experience. Nicole was just 32 years old, four boys, her husband. Uh, It's, it's heavy. Yeah. You know, Death is obviously never easy. When you lose a loved one, it's hard. But, you know, if it's a 92-year-old grandfather that knows Jesus or something that you've had many years and a lot of preparation, you know, leading up to the moment of death kind of thing, it, it's a little more palatable. But like you said before, this, this kind of thing doesn't happen. Of course, it does. 
but you never think it's right. going to. Here's a young mom leaving behind a three-year-old, a two-year-old, and then two twin boys right now just referred to as baby A and baby B. Baby B also apparently has had a few medical complications, but things are looking up there. But there's some things that, that need to be taken care of medically for baby B. And, and a husband who now has four boys to raise and no wife. And I don't know about you, Scott, or Zach, but, you know, as a husband and a father and now grandpa, this is like about as hard as it gets. Ugh, I can't imagine the weight. Yeah. I, uh, Scott, you're also a new, by the way, congratulations. You're a new daddy. And um, when when you hear news like this, it's just sort of strikes a little bit closer to home, doesn't it? I mean, given that it, you it now really, know what that feels like. It really does. Uh, we, you know, I've had a couple conversations with Kim about that of, it just hits differently now. And it's one of those ways it hits differently. You can't even fully describe it, um, but it does. And then mixing this in with family and relationships. And, you know, we start looking back on, you know, Kim and Nicole in this process were pregnant at the same time. I was texting Kevin back in December, congrats on the twins when they announced that. And, you know, because I have family in Virginia, Kevin and Nicole were in Virginia, so we'd occasionally go and visit them when our plans would overlap. And you know, sharing life and experience, and as a parent, I, I don't, I can't even wrap my mind around what Kevin must be processing and feeling right now, and and how this is all affecting him in this moment. Because as I as I look into my son's eyes, who we've had for two months now. And it's almost even hard for my mind to even go there because it it does seem so unreal in moments. Yeah. You know, if you just I was walking with Mary the other day, in fact, last night, and we were talking about this whole thing. We prayed for the family. Um, but I, I was. Uh, I was thinking about, you know, some of the what ifs and, and what nows like, you know, so what now and. It, it's way too early, way too early to even go there, but you can't, you're human, so your mind says, well, how in the world do you raise four boys by yourself when you're a dad who has to have a job, I suppose, and try to su support the family, but there's no mom there to help, and these these are little ones, three years old, two years old, and, and two newborns, so you figure by next year you got a four-year-old, a three-year-old, and two one-year-olds that are probably just beginning to walk. On top of that, he needs to deal with the funeral preparations for his own wife, the loss of his best friend and his wife and his lover. I mean, there's that. And then how do you break the news to a three-year-old and a two-year-old who wonder where mommy is and how, you know, and, and besides, baby B, the second twin, uh, is experiencing some medical complications and has already had one surgery and will be facing another one in the not-too-distant future. That's in that's incomprehensible and insurmountable from a human perspective. And so, you know, and maybe as a pastor, let me just ask you this, Scott, you know, what do you do when the why questions come? And it's probably it's way too early to try to answer them. I'm, I'm pretty sure most of these don't really have answers. But as believers, how can we rally around in love on this family? I want to encourage everybody in the listening audience to be praying for Kevin and these boys to be praying for family members like yourself and loved ones that knew and loved Nicole um, for future assistance, meaning maybe there's a, a, a nanny, somebody who's, you know, her kids have moved out, she's on her own, can assist with these. Who knows? Who knows what these things? Who knows how this is going to? But, but God, before the foundation of the earth, saw this day coming. He knew it would happen, and he is the provider. So he's got this in the palm of his hand, but... I'm just overwhelmed talking about it, Scott. Like, I don't even, as a pastor, what do you say to people about this? So many different things come to mind. It's one of those situations where you have some scripture, but it's another situation where you're saying, I have no words as well. I think if you are listening right now and you know somebody who is in the midst of or experiencing an unprecedented tragedy, sometimes the best thing that we can do is listen. And sometimes the best thing we can do is just pray for them in those moments. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are here and you're saying, 
I'm not necessarily in a tragedy right now or, or experiencing something, but I want to, God, why or how could this happen? And I, I just keep coming back to Ephesians uh, 6, where Paul says that there are principalities and powers at work within this world, that we are still in a place where I say sometimes we're in a war zone where there are other forces at work and, and the enemies at work. And in these moments, we have to know that somehow God is working and redeeming all things for the good. We don't always see how or why, but somehow he's doing that. And that would be my pastoral response. If you know someone who is going through this, sometimes the best thing we can do is listen and pray. And if you're somebody who's just trying to process this from a distance, consider that we're in a world where there are other forces at work and somehow God is working in all things, but we may not always have that answer right when we think we should. Um, In regards to supporting Kevin and the family and the kids in this time, I actually had the opportunity to speak to Kevin on the phone on Monday for about 30 minutes, and he is so appreciative of all the prayers and the support and the kindness that has been coming their way from unexpected places. It's been really cool to see the people of God be the people of God and step up in a time like this. So if you're a prayer warrior, please continue to pray for Kevin and the family as they navigate this season as uh, they really appreciate the prayers. And Kevin was even sharing with me how much he appreciates that. On a practical level as well, there's actually a GoFundMe page that has been started for Kevin and the boys. And if there's anybody who would be able to or be led to give financially, the GoFundMe page is continuing to accept donations. And this is a way to help them navigate the future as a way for him as a single father to say, here's some stability. Here's something uh, to, you know, help out during this season. And so if you feel so led uh, to give to the GoFundMe and to support in that way, that's a practical way. But prayer, giving, different ways that we as the church can step up and say, we are going to make a difference in the midst of tragedy. We want to participate with God in finding a way to bring redemption and good in dark seasons. Amen. Yeah, we're going to be talking about this, not just today. I'm sure we'll be providing updates periodically, but Zach, you were going to say something. Well, yeah, <clears throat> Scott, you referenced, uh, you know, a tangible way that we as brothers and sisters in Christ can get on, on board and involved in supporting the family um, through it, mm-hmm. something like that GoFundMe page. I actually put a link to that. Uh, I pinned it to the top of the WDCX Radio Facebook page. Um, so if you'd like to give that way, um, you know, feel free to do so. The other thing, Scott, you said, you, you know, desperately prayer is needed. That's why we're doing this program today. So if you're listening, we're hoping that, you know, loved ones, friends of Nicole call in and share their heart for Kevin and the boys. But if you're listening in Oshawa today, you can relate to this. Mm-hmm. You can feel for this family and we want to hear from you we want to know that you're praying we want you to share your heart and encouragement with kevin and again for the boys but this opportunity is it doesn't come around often to really speak to the to the heart of those who are broken yeah and i just wanted to mention um you know there have been a lot of people have posted encouraging words and uh and you know posting that they're praying for kevin and the boys and for the family uh, on on facebook and on other social media um, like I said, if you want any kind of additional info or an update, go to the WDCX radio Facebook page, and uh, you can click on that. And, of course, then uh, a link is provided for you to get additional information. But let me just say that um, an awful lot of people have already reached out, and I believe that by talking about it today on the air, an even broader uh, group of people in the body of Christ can rally around and be supportive. And, and Pastor Scott, you know that when the body of Christ swings into action, big stuff happens because Jesus shows up in the midst of it. And so I, I wonder if, uh, if you wouldn't just give a word of encouragement, you know, from your own heart for people to take this seriously and to pray sincerely pray. Some may want to give or whatever, but you know, the, the fact is that, um, we can tangibly respond today. Even, even people hearing our voices today, people that call in today, who understand, like our good news verse for today comes from Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. A lot of people in our listening audience have experienced tragedy. Uh, unforeseen circumstances came their way. Tragic news slapped them in the face one day when all of a sudden they were just shocked to learn something they never imagined could happen. And yet God met them in that place. And so you may have some encouraging words you want to share today. 
But Scott, um, just collectively, you know, there's a lot of people in the body of Christ listening in the U.S. and in Canada, in places like Oshawa and Toronto and Niagara Falls and Fredonia and Rochester and Buffalo and wherever. We have the opportunity right here in this moment to step up, be the body of Christ, and take action, uh, and if nothing else, intercede on behalf of this situation. So anything you want to say about that, Scott? What I would like to say as I'm thinking through this and, and praying about this is what I've been, one of the things I've most been encouraged by and challenged by, honestly, in my faith was Kevin made a post on his Facebook page a couple days after Nicole had passed away, sharing with how she was his best friend, how much he loved her. She truly was an incredible person. And at the, at the end of his post, he posted a verse that I believe is perfect for us as we're thinking through tragedies and difficulties. And it's Jesus's words in John 16, 33, where he says, in this world, you will face trouble, but take heart because I have overcome the world. And there's something there for us to cling to as the church. There's something there for us to remember that as we're thinking about the process, even that Christ went through in his death and crucifixion and his burial, that as God is at work within all things, somehow the hope of resurrection is always inevitable. There is a hope in Christ Jesus. There is an overcoming work that has been done in Christ. And in that overcoming work, as we're going through that time that might feel like Saturday when Christ is buried and the disciples fleed, and, and we're feeling like we're in a tragic moment like that, the scriptures remind us that there's a peace that we can experience that surpasses all understanding. And that peace is found in Christ Jesus, and that peace will lead us to a place of experiencing hope and resurrection and what it means to become an overcomer in Christ. That is such a good word, and, and with that word, I'm reminded that, you know, when, when Kevin posted that John 16:33, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. Uh, little did he probably, I mean, he may have been speaking about himself and or trying to provide some encouragement to family and friends, but today I believe a whole bunch of people who are facing difficult circumstances are being encouraged by that word, which uh, provided some ministry to each one of us. Incredible. And Scott, thank you for, for sharing that with us. I, I just want to pray real quick and then we'll let you go. I appreciate your time, Pastor Scott. Zach had to leave us. Um, <clears throat> he's attending to something over there in the uh, control room, but Lord, I thank you that we have you to turn to in the midst of any circumstance. This world is filled with trouble, and every one of us have difficulties and circumstances we're facing. For some, it's financial or medical. It may be relational. In this case, Kevin Richard lost his wife when she was giving birth to twins. He's now left with four boys, all under the age of four. And Lord, I, I don't even know how to comprehend what that looks like, but he's going to need to see you in a bigger and more profound way than ever before. And I believe some of that's going to come through the body of Christ swinging into action. So, Lord, show us what that can be. Uh, help us to take the words that Pastor Scott shared with us and not only encourage one another in this situation, but encourage one another in other situations. And we thank you, Lord, that we have you to turn to in the midst of whatever we're going through. Be glorified in all of this, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, Pastor Scott, we look forward to talking to you again sometime soon. You're the pastor at New Story Church, which is the Kenmore, Tonawanda area. What's your website if anybody wants to connect with you? Newstorybuffalo.com. All right, newstorybuffalo.com. God bless you. I know you're out of town today. Thank you for joining us here on MBL. Thanks for having me. Well, we're going to do what we've done in the past and basically assemble an audio greeting card, if we can, with words of encouragement. Perhaps some of you want to pray for Kevin and his boys. Pray for the family affected by all of this, and we urge you to join us. Pick up the phone right now and call us, 800-684-2848 or 8835000. Some of you knew Nicole, Nicole personally. Some of you know of this um, situation directly. Others are finding out for the first time, but as God lays it on your heart, if there's a word of encouragement you want to leave for Kevin uh, and perhaps to just to let him know you're praying, if nothing else, feel free to join us here at 800-684-2848 or 8835000. Kevin, my good brother, I'm so sorry for your loss. I truly am. Um, years ago when, uh, when I had a situation in my life and it was very difficult for me, I asked God to, to prove to me, to show me that he, that he cared for me, that, 
that there was a that there was a way past it. And uh, within seconds after saying that to him, my uh, my favorite verse uh, appeared on the wall right in front of me, Hebrews eleven one. Now faith is being sure of what you hope for, and certain of what you do not see. Kevin, just know that God is closer to you right now than than he's probably ever been in your life. And, uh, you know, he, he says he never puts more on us than what we can bear. And I got to tell you, my friend, you must be a, a much greater man than me because you're going to be able to bear this. Uh, but that's that's quite a quite a cross for you to, to drag. You're not alone. We're all out here with you and uh, we love you and we want to uh, to see you come through this. So uh, I just wanted to pass it on to you. Be safe and be blessed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes, Kevin, uh, I weep with you. And know that there are thousands of us that you've never seen and maybe never will see till heaven. But we are weeping with you, my brother. Amen. All right, let me get the Zach man into the conversation here if I can and just get your own thoughts. I, I think that for anyone listening who has children, there's a, for some reason a greater impact. Maybe I'm wrong about that. There may be people that are equally impacted even though they don't have kids. But once you start thinking about children growing up without a mom or being faced with the reality that their mom has been taken from them unexpectedly, uh, it's just overwhelming. Then as a grandparent, you kind of see it, you know, from the perspective of not only a parent but a grandparent, and it's heartbreaking. Um, I think this has got to be one of the hardest programs we've ever done, and I, I think that the hesitancy on the part of some of our callers just stems from the fact that, not A, these – these folks aren't as well known as, you know, some of the people that we see like Damar Hamlin of the Bills when he went down and had a heart attack during a Buffalo Bills game. Mm. You know, all of a sudden people just started pouring out love and stuff. Um, but this is a little bit more personal because you're talking about a, a husband, a father, little children. Um, it's it's an overwhelming situation. But what are your thoughts about it? <sighs> just devastated. I mean, I said this a little earlier when we had Scott Lackey on the program, but like, when I came across it, the, the natural thing for us to do as humans is to compare it to our own lives. And I don't want to do that here because Kevin and his boys are going through hell on earth in and of themselves. But the natural response is for me to put myself as much as I possibly can in Kevin's shoes and to think to myself, what would I do? What would I do if my wife, Missy, was in labor? I do have a, a son and a daughter at home, and if she was pregnant and in, in labor and I lost my best friend, I lost my wife and the mommy of my two children, and in his case, four. I don't know what I would do. I don't know how I would process it, how I would handle it. And my heart just breaks. And in that moment when I first saw the news, it broke for my friend Nicole, who's now home with Jesus, mm -hmm. that, you know, acquaintance maybe would be a better word. It's been years since we've talked, but I, we were friends back during our camp days, and I can't imagine... My my in my case, my little baby Blythe, the year and a half old, the favorite her favorite time of the week is when mommy comes home. Mm -hmm. Whether she's at work or in the other room or whatever, when she's around mommy, she's at her best. And these four little boys are never gonna have that opportunity again. And I love that we have this opportunity right here and right now. I've never met Kevin. I may someday, Lord willing, I'll have that opportunity. But if you're listening today in Oshawa or in Fredonia or in Olean or right here in the Western New York area, call in, share your heart because there is a young man my age who just lost the love of his life and he's got to do this thing alone. But we know that as the body of Christ, he's not alone. Amen. Jesus is with him, but we can rally around him, pray for him, love on him, encourage him, share your heart with him. And now you can go on social media, you can type something and walk away, but this is personal. This is you using your voice and your love, your attention, your focus. Here, it'll take you 30 seconds. Share your heart with this young man and with his boys and with the family that's now left to grieve. There's a mom and a dad who lost their daughter. There's uh, in-laws that lost their daughter-in-law. This is devastating, and yes, we may not know them directly, but this is your opportunity to speak life into a situation where we know that God takes our ashes, and he turns them into beauty. We don't know how he's going to do that, what his plan is, but we know that he is working and that he is good. And this is our chance as brothers and sisters in Christ to 
just relay and convey love, condolences, support, and prayer. You know, someday um, when I'm old, <laughs> which is probably starting today, no, but I mean, someday when someone says to me, look back on all the years that you did Christian radio and tell me about the high points and the low points. And there've been both. There's been everything in between. But you know, when the body of Christ swings into action, it's overwhelmingly encouraging. I, I remember one time a, a woman called from Syracuse, New York, and we were talking about needs. And she said, I have a need. She said, I'm, I'm elderly. My, my, uh, my husband and I are elderly. We, we have a quarter mile long driveway and it's filled with two feet of snow and we can't get out, but we need to get our medication. And I'm just wondering if you pray that maybe God could help us somehow, that he'd do something to help us be able to get the medication we need. So we prayed. We went to commercial break. Two minutes later, we were back and a gentleman's on the line saying, I'm a plow driver and I'm in her area. I'll go plow her driveway. <laughs> and he took care of that. And how, how many times over the years somebody would say, you know, I work in a plant, it's kind of noisy, uh, but something happened on the air and someone needed prayer and I knew I had to pray. So I shut the machine off and I got on my knees right there in the factory and I joined you in praying for them. Sometimes people pull off the road because they want to close their eyes when they pray and they just get to the side of the road and they pray along with us. And I know for sure that some of you are doing that. But what we're doing here is we're assembling a, an audio tape that we're going to send to Kevin to be able to demonstrate to him that people everywhere are praying for him and that this thing it has not gone unnoticed. And yes, people have commented on Facebook, as Zach said, or on other social media, and that's a wonderful way to express yourself. But if you're willing to say, as Philippians 4.13 does, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, pick up the phone, use your own voice, and let Kevin know that you love him. And I just want to speak real quick before I get to the phones here. Uh, again, our number is 800 684 2848 or 8835000 800 684 2848 or 8835000 uh, Kevin I have not met you but I know a number of people who are close to you some of them are even family members and I just want you to know as as a dad and a grandpa and uh, a man who has enjoyed 38 years of marriage with my wife how heavy my heart is for what you might be facing today and I cannot fathom for the life of me, how I would have raised three kids by myself. Now, God will provide for your needs, and I don't know what the future holds, and I don't know how he's going to provide for you, but he will. And I just want to encourage you to know that people are praying. I've, I've heard from dozens already in text messages and emails since we began the conversation that God is really stirring the hearts of his people, and we do love you, we do care for you, and we simply wanted to take time on today's program to express that. So I hope you know that this is done with your best interest in mind. Um, and we pray that people will be responsive, uh, prayerfully, financially, in terms of own, their own support. Some people that you're close to will get personally involved in your life in a way that you couldn't have imagined before. Um, your family will rally around you, as I'm sure they already have. And we're grateful that you have that. But just know that the body of Christ is praying for you all across Western New York and Southern Ontario. All right, again, the phone number, uh, we don't have a lot of time. you got to get to the phones here, 800-684-2848 or 883-5000. Uh, Nicole Richard lost her life giving birth to twins last week. Kevin, of course, uh, and Nicole have two boys already, Soren and Finley. Soren's three, Finley's two. And Nicole was giving birth to twins, ran into some complications, and later lost her life. So Kevin is now the father of four little boys, has no wife, and of course these little boys have no mommy. And uh, if you could leave a word of encouragement or just let them know that you're praying for them, that would be profound, all right? 800-684-2848 or 883-5000. Let me get to Owen real quick. And Owen, speak from your heart, brother. I'm going to get out of the way as if you're okay. leaving a phone message for Kevin. But go ahead, okay. Owen, you're on the air. Okay. <clears throat> brother, uh this is Owen from Niagara Falls. I, I have six kids, and uh, just the heaviness of hear, hearing the story. Um, in my heart, I just I pray that <clears throat> you would just sense the, the invisible God make, make manifesting himself to you, just to experience in him his presence more than ever before. And, you know, I'm just going to keep praying for you, actually. I was thinking about how things can fade. I don't want this to fade because it's not going to fade for you. And, and I 
just I pray that that God would really move and provide for every single need and and note that I think so many people would call in. I think the people are just speechless. This is so unbelievable. But I love you and Jesus, and I'm praying for you. Thank you. Bye. Um, I just wanted to call in. Um, we've been friends with Nicole. I've been friends with Nicole for about 10 years now. My husband's been longer. He um, had the opportunity to introduce Nicole and Kevin. Um, but I just wanted to speak on behalf of people that do know her, that how much she was known for her, sorry about my kids, but how much she was known for her hospitality and her love, and her doors were always open for everyone. Um, and I just wanted to tell Kevin and the family that our hearts are also broken for them, and we're mourning with him, and we love him so much. That is so praying. This is so sweet. Ruth, thank you, and thanks for your little one being a part of this. That makes it all the more special. <laughs> God bless yeah. you. All right. Thank you. Take care. Okay, so uh, I guess Katerina is next, and it says here Grand Island, New York. Katerina, are you calling from Grand Island? Yes, I am. I'm Nicole's cousin. Oh, well, I'm so sorry for your loss of your cousin, and I wanted to give you an opportunity to just speak from your heart to Kevin right now, if you don't mind. Um, this Christmas we were able to get together with him and I don't remember the last time that we've been able to all be together on Christmas, but, um, we were hoping and planning for the summer of 2024 for the girl cousins to go to Germany, um, and see where our grandmother lives. And I looked at Kevin and I go, Kevin, do you think you're going to be able to handle four little boys by yourself? And he smirked and then Nicole, like, you know, had a big smile on her face and bumped his arm. She's like, oh, he's got this. He mm -hmm. can handle it. And um, that was like the first thing that came to mind. And I'm sure that right now he doesn't feel like he knows how he's going to handle this. But I just wanted to read um, from Ephesians 3. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with the power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, which I know that Kevin is, may have strength to comprehend all the saints, what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, and that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we can ask or think according to the power that is at work within us to him be the glory in the church and in christ jesus through all the generations forever and ever amen Katarina, and, um, thank you go ahead yeah um i just know that god is going to do far more abundantly than we can ask or think right now and so i'm praying that for kevin and soren and the boys um and finley as well and i just I know that he's going to do something big. I think it's going to be bigger than we can even imagine. And God always shows up and always surprises us. And that's my hope, obviously, that, uh, well, it's not, it's it's like what Owen mentioned earlier. I think it was Owen mentioned uh, Hebrews 11, 1. Perhaps it was a yeah. different caller. But, you know, faith is the substance of things we hope for. It's the evidence of things we cannot see. And that's the mm -hmm. exact reality here, that there's stuff we can't see that we can yeah. count on because God is God. And Katerina, yeah. ooh, not easy to talk about this stuff. Your uh, your thoughts are just really precious. I thank you for sharing them. Um, I'm happy to. Thank you for the opportunity, Kevin. My heart is breaking. I just wanted to say that God is with you as we speak. God works in mysterious ways. You and your family will be in my prayers and please feel my love my arms wrapped around you hugging you and you will be supported to get through this with your four little boys i just wanted to say that and even though i don't love you i love your spirit and i ask everyone who can to reach out to you and let everyone know 
how much you are loved, how much you and your boys mean, and how supported you will be. You will get through this. God bless you and your family. Um, so I was roommates with Nicole for a brief time in Virginia, and Kevin, Nicole, and I um, have been good friends for a really long time. Um, whew, Kevin, grief is a roller coaster. It's so hard. And there's so many times where you just feel so alone in your grief. And I just want you to know, and I know you know this, that you have so many friends and families or family who love you so much and who would move mountains for you and those boys. And just remember that in those low, lonely moments that people want to help you. People want to be there for you and people love you so, so much. So love you and thinking about you all the time. Hi, Kevin. Um, I pray that God will give you strength. God will wrap his arms around you and the children. Um, I have to tell you, I lost my mom the same way. I'm the oldest of five children at the time. Uh, my mom passed away. I was 16. My younger brother was nine. My other sister, younger sister was seven. I had a brother five, and my youngest at the time was three, plus the baby. My mom passed away. The baby died. Just months later, our three-year-old brother also died. But I didn't think I could go a day, you know, without my mom. But with God's goodness, I'm here. So I know that the God that, you know, helped me through, me and my family through this, he will walk you through with your children. And so may God bless you and your children. I keep praying for you that you will never forget the God that is holding on to you right now. God bless. First, I want to say, Kevin, how sorry uh, we all are for your loss. And um, just remember that God is with you and run to him just like you've never run to him before. Um and, and I just want you to know that a lot of people understand, can't imagine the grief you're going to go through, but do understand. And I want to tell you that, please, 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 let not your family and your friends help you. Sorry. Let your family and your friends help you. You're going to feel like you need to do this all alone, and you're going to want to do it all alone, but you don't have to. Please, please. Let your family and your friends help you. They want to help you. They need to help you. So let them be there for you. I promise to pray for you. And I pray that God blesses you. Take care, brother. Hi, Kevin. I don't know you, but the Lord knows you. And I pray that the Lord will comfort your heart. He is able. He understands. Um, promise never to leave us nor forsake us. So in this time of grief, I pray that you will draw near to him, draw close to him in your secret place. God bless you and your boys. I've known Kevin Nicole for 10 years. I've been roommates with her for a few years. When they were dating and I just watched their love flourish, they were like the best married couple. I've looked up to them so much. They were our mom and dad of the group. Uh, Nicole was the best person. She was, her doors were open. She was so hospitable. I just wanted to say that we love you, Kevin. We're here for you. We're praying for you every day. Um, our whole group is wrecked, um, and it's because of how much Nicole meant to us. And we're heartbroken. The kingdom will advance because of this. And I know it already has. That's what I got. Amen. Ellie, that's so sweet. And by the way, um, anybody that I've spoken with who knew Nicole, and of course they love Kevin just as much, but anybody that I know who knew Nicole said she was like the light of their life, that she just had a personality and a kindness and whatever. I don't know how you describe it, but she sounds like a very special young woman. Zach, Zach knew her personally, my son Zach. Um, 
and ministered together with her in camp ministry for a couple of years, or at least was friends with friends who ministered together at the same time. But yeah, I guess she was pretty special. And I thank you for sharing from your heart about what she meant to you. You know, if there's any comfort to be found in a situation <clears throat> like the one we're talking about today, it's the reality that Nicole had a relationship with Jesus. Jesus lived in her heart. And 1 John 5, 11, 12, and 13 says the record or the proof is this, that God has given us eternal life. And this life is found in his Son. Whoever has the Son of God, that's Jesus, has this life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have this life. But these things have I written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God in order that you may know that you have eternal life. And that's a concrete knowing, that you might know that you know that you know that you have eternal life. And Nicole knows Jesus. She's in the presence of God. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That doesn't make it any easier to experience physical loss. And family and friends are grieving deeply about her loss. And Kevin, of course, is left without his wife and four boys left without their mom. But she is alive and well in heaven in the presence of her Savior. And we all have the promise of being reunited with loved ones, including Nicole, uh, after we're gone, after we take our last breath. So isn't that a miracle? Isn't that a, an incredible benefit to knowing Jesus, that we have that hope, we have that reality to look forward to? I want to get to Rosemary real quick, if we can, here on NBL. And, of course, we're leaving comments for Kevin. So I'll get out of the way. Rosemary, just speak from your heart, if you don't mind. I see, I see it looks like you're calling from Grand Island, New York. Um, share, share your heart with Kevin, and, and uh, I'll get out of the way. Thank you, Neil. I'm Nicole's aunt. Um, her mother is my sister, and Nicole was often at my house growing up with my children, and um, she was a delight. But watching her grow up and become a woman and have a family, um, we would often have large gatherings in our backyard, and Nicole would bring all these fabulous treats for us to, to share together and to eat. And I would always be fascinated by that, hearing the stories of Oktoberfest and different things that she would do in her home and invite people over. And she was just a wonderful woman. She was somebody very special. And Kevin just wants you to know that your, your family loves you, and we're here to walk with you. Um, we will help you to keep Nicole's spirit alive through your boys. We will tell them stories about her. We will tell about what she was like when she was a little girl, the things that she loved to do. And we hope to anticipate some of your needs, but for those that we can't anticipate, for those that we don't know about, you have but to ask, and we will help you to, to fulfill it, whatever it is that you need. So we love you, Kevin. We are committed to praying for you every day. Right now, it's just about every minute that we're praying for you. So know that we love you, and we stand by you. 